Next, uh, the next talk is going to be given by Moses Ike. By the way, pay attention, Moses is uh, actually going to graduate this year. Um, the talk is called SCAFI, Detecting Modern ICS Attacks by Correlating Behaviors in SCADA and uh, Physical Systems. Thanks. Good day, everyone. I'll be presenting our work, SCAFI, which is an approach to detect modern industrial control systems attacks or ICS attacks by correlating behaviors in the SCADA side of ICS with the behaviors in the physical side of ICS. This work is a collaboration uh, between Georgia Tech and Sandia National Labs. So ICS uh, operate our life essential industrial processes such as the energy grid and water treatment plants. In ICS networks, special software systems called supervisory control and data acquisition or SCADA manage industrial processes uh, by reading their physical measurements and updating their physical states. Um, unfortunately, as we all know, um, we continue to see the rise in attacks such as uh, Industrial, Oldsburn, and, and, and uh, Stuxnet. And when they come into the ICS network, they compromise SCADA, and from there they launch attacks on the physical processes, causing physical damages. Existing techniques uh, to detect ICS attacks uh, are largely grouped into three. Uh, we have, first of all, the uh, physical anomaly models that can identify anomalous sensor readings. Uh, however, these techniques, because they largely focus on the physical after effect of the attack, they raise false alarms from benign physical anomalies like faults and errors. Uh, we ha also have the host and network anomaly detection uh, techniques. Uh, these techniques, uh, they look at the execution sequences in the SCADA host as well as the command traffic. These techniques are effective against noisy type of attacks like when the attacker use a malformed protocol or they, uh, they do network scans. However, they are evaded by modern attacks because modern attacks make use of legitimate SCADA tools. And so they can execute the right type of uh, execution sequence and, uh, and make the right protocol uh, while disrupting the semantics of the physical process. Another thing to note is that uh, these techniques, us, they, they perform their detection in isolation. There is no cross-domain correlation between them, which further makes them easily evadable. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, modern attacks, they make use of legitimate SCADA tools in the SCADA environment to appear normal uh, with the, uh, the normal operation of the SCADA. Uh, for example, in 2021, we had the attack in Florida, the city of Oldsmer, where the attacker came into the, uh, the SCADA network, compromised the human machine interface, which is a legitimate SCADA tool used by operators, and from there was able to alter the process parameters to poison the water supply. In 2016, we have the Ukrainian uh, uh, power grid attack by the malware called Industrial. This malware made use of the OPC services in the SCADA environment to retrieve the target device tag, in this case was a circuit breaker, I was able to disrupt the circuit breaker. Uh, OPC stands for Open Platform Communication, and it's a service used in the SCADA environment to, uh, um, to allow uh, um, interoperable components. Also, I think we're all familiar with uh, Stuxnet, which is the attack that uh, disrupted the Iranian uh, nuclear centrifuge. This attack, uh, the uh, malware came into the, uh, to the network from the, from the uh, IT side, exploited zero days, finally found himself in the SCADA side, and then was able to infect the, SCADA, uh, the Siemens SCADA programs and drivers, and then launched the attack to reprogram the PLCs. So this particular slide uh, shows our threat model, which is the attacker has now compromised SCADA, and it wants to disrupt the physical process. How can you detect that? Our approach is to leverage the unique execution phases in SCADA uh, operation uh, to identify the limited set of legitimate system activities to control the physical world. And this will be different from, uh, from the, the attacker's activities uh, in the execution phases. Uh, for example, SCADA starts with initialization phase. In this phase, it you know, loads uh, the device driver, set up the network software interfaces with the PLC, with the physical world, and then it proceeds to the process control execution phase. This comprises of process monitoring and process altering. In the process monitoring phase, SCADA is reading physical measurements from the plant, updating the state in its memory, and checking to see if I have to respond to 
the events that show up. And if you, it has to respond, it goes into the process authoring phase. In this phase, it executes the physical uh, domain functions and then is able to uh, um, you know, update the physical state. Now, these phases, uh, these actual phases, uh, they, they have a characteristic system operations uh, that, uh, that, are, that defines what they do. So what we do in this work is, instead of considering SCADA as one monolithic line of execution, right, we specialize its uh, operations in the unique execution phases, which is how they work, regardless of what the physical process is. Right? If you analyze the software, you see these phases going on. Uh, so by selectively monitoring the attacker's activities in these phases, you can be able to uh, find out when the execution phase characteristics has been uh, violated. And that is because when the attacker comes in into the SCADA environment, the attacker has to stage its, its tools, uh, set up its payload, and this involves executing the wrong system operations in the wrong executional uh, phase of SCADA. And so this is how we're able to uh, catch uh, the, the attacker. Now, there are two uh, ways in which the attacker can cause a violation of these execution phases. The first one is uh, injection, the second one is bypass. Injection is when the attacker executes additional system operations or system calls within the phase it's not supposed to. So we call this the injection violation. Or the attacker can circumvent all this phase stuff and just directly send uh, traffic or command to the PLC via the physical interface. So we call this a bypass violation because the attacker is supposed to go through those uh, phases that how SCADA works, but it did not. So now, in order to correlate SCADA with the physical side, we begin to analyze uh, what are the physical impact of actually violating the SCADA execution phases. And so through this, we came up with some, uh, uh, we, some physical anomaly uh, uh, ways. One of them is uh, when you violate the SCADA execution phases, there are times when the actuator state would be uh, would be opposing to the trajectory of the process or inconsistent with each other. So we call this the inconsistent actuator, actuator states. And also we have uh, another uh, physical anomaly whereby the process has been driven outside the, calibration, the calibrated uh, set point. And I'll talk about this more later on. So uh, in order to extract and model these SCADA execution phases, we developed a physical process aware dynamic analysis. And this involves using the OPC events, which is what SCADA responds to in the industrial environment. And we use this to induce SCADA so it can execute the process monitoring and process altering execution phases. The way we do this is by looking at the PLC ladder logic. So we enumerate the actuator states that each OPC event uh, depend on, and then we induce that into the, uh, the read handle of SCADA and then allow it to execute. And then we look at the, uh, the execution and we're able to identify the boundaries of where the process monitoring starts and where it ends and also the process altering, and then we build these characteristics of this particular behavior of SCADA. So in doing this type of SCADA execution phase analysis, we identify the different system interactions that SCADA system is having with the operating system. So uh, if you're familiar with the ICS Purdue model, which is right there on the slide from uh, you know, enterprise level down to the process, uh, this can be seen as a further subdivision of the Purdue level three, which is the SCADA side. So from S4 to S0, uh, identifies a different type of uh, you know, system interactions that SCADA is having with the operating system. So in S4, you see where I talked about the actual SCADA application going from initialization and then process control. And then the S3 is uh, the, the SCADA system obtaining a, a handle, a software handle to the physical uh, world, which is the PLC on the uh, layer, layer two, right? And so the S2 to S0 is the things that happen in the kernel space. So this actual type of uh, analysis allows you to build a SCADA-specific IDS, because now you can um, you know, track the attacker's activities as, as it is trying to uh, you know, make its way towards the physical world by interacting with the operating system. Actually, if you look at the initialization stage of SCADA, you see that in this phase, SCADA is building all these uh, you know, objects that it needs uh, during the initialization. Now let me talk about how we're able to model the physical impact that we're able to derive from 
looking at the violations in, in Skater land. So again, what we did was that we leveraged the PLC, PLC uh, logic, and then we extract the actual actuator states that depends on each OPC event, and we then we, we toggle them in the SCADA operation, and then we see how the process is, is changing. So uh, the idea of this is to assign a particular score to each actuator in the physical process based on how the actuator is uh, affecting the process. Is it going up and down, and by how much? So this way you can have a relative impact score for each actuator in the system. And so by doing this iteratively, we're able to uh, have an algorithm to derive a particular impact coefficient score for each actuator, and that allows us to know when the actuator is having, uh, if in the, in, like, like, like during production, we're able to see when the actuators have an inconsistent state with the process trajectory or when it's driving the process outside the calibration. So let's take a look at the uh, industrial uh, malware, which uh, caused a blackout on the Ukrainian power grid. So looking at that slide, you see that we're able to, uh, we, we, we run the malware in our environment, and you can take a look at some of the behaviors here. The first behavior is it starts the connection with uh, the, the actual uh, physical side, and then the red re uh, rectangle there was the payload, and the actual payload there uh, comprised of the OPC tag, something called IOA, information object address, of the circuit breaker, which it launched the attack on the circuit breaker. So looking at the execution here, we see that uh, Industrial uh, executed some um, system operations that are not, that are anomalous to the, uh, to the process monitoring uh, phases. And I think there's more information that can be looked at in the paper. So we did some real-world experiments uh, using a, uh, an infrastructure at the Sandia National Labs that deployed each diverse of real-world physical process in physical ROTUs with hardware in the loop uh, uh, capability. So those are our diverse physical process. And we launched some attacks that are based on the industry standard, uh, like the MITRE ICS framework. And we, we got some good results. Uh, we had 95% uh, accuracy, and the average detection time was around 9 to 10 seconds. And uh, some of this represents the different injection and execution phase uh, bypass that we're able to observe from those real-world attack. We also conducted some uh, real-world exploits using a framework known as ICS plot framework, and we were able to observe that as the exploit was launched, we saw that the attacker was making these interactions with the SCADA software stack that we talked about uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the point. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take some, some questions now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any, any questions? If not yet, I, I have a question. So have, um, did you encounter a challenge in actually mapping the SCADA versus physical world? There is any delay that you've noticed between what you were expecting on one side versus another one? And have you considered attacks that would actually introduce delays, not only inject or uh, remove, but actually introducing delays so that they change your outcomes? It's a very important question because, yes, you can launch the attack on the, on the physical side and then it may not show up after, after a while, right? So the way we did that is by, uh, we did some kind of a uh, manual investigation to see what is the right time to wait for a particular process. So when we launch the attack and we see that the process has not responded, we use something called uh, steady state. So we basically see uh, is the process, you know, uh, you know, uh, moving uniformly or is it kind of still changing? So when we see that the process is stable, we conclude that this attack is no longer gonna have an effect and so we stop checking. But uh, if the process is still changing, then we're still tracking to look for the anomalous change and then when it happens, then we correlate the two together. But that's a very uh, important question. Excellent, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, great. Thank you for the wonderful talk. Um, so I have a question. Could you just explain a little more about the impact factor and how you calculate it? Like, depending on what the control system is, if yeah. it's a PID controller or if it's MPC, and so how do you figure that out? So it's a very generic process. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so basically, in PLC level logic, right, is, uh, the, this is how the devices are connected together, all the actuators, all the parameters, right? So based on a particular PLC mapping to a particular output in the PLC logic, we take those particular actuators and then we begin to toggle their states. As we're toggling their states, we're seeing how the process parameter is changing. For example, let's say you have a water treatment test, uh, 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 
test bed that has to do with controlling the tank in the, in the actual, in the, in the tank, the level of the tank. You're monitoring how the tank is rising and falling, and that is the change in the process. So as you're toggling each, each of this, like, like say one actually, you toggle the states and you see how the process is changing. Based on how the process is changing relative to others, you assign each of these actuators some impact score. And this determines how, how important they are, for example, to the process. Because uh, if you change this one so much, this one will cause more harm to the process than the other one. So you have some relative score. Right, so this is how you kind of map that impact. So you give them a score. So during the production, right, you see a particular state change happen uh, to maybe a few devices, and you try to see uh, are these changes, are they in, in, in the trajectory of the process? Are they inconsistent with, like, for example, are they tracking the, the process down, or this one's tracking the process down or up, for example? So that's opposing uh, you know, impact, that, and that should not happen in any benign setting. So that's an anomaly. So we, we, uh, we assign that some anomaly uh, to the process. Yeah. Thank you so much, Moses. <laughs> Let's thank again the speaker, and uh, thank you.